Welcome to Eltham started as this tiny little group of neighbours who um, live really close to this place where a whole bunch of Syrian and Iraqi refugees were moving in. And in our gorgeous neighbourhood when somebody new moves in we go and take them a gift and we say hello and introduce ourselves and see what we can do to make them feel welcome in our community. I'm very proud of my community. I really, I've lived in lots of different places and I, this is the place where, where I have chosen to live. You know, the only criticism I would have of our community is, as one of my friends put it, it's too white bread, we need more multigrain. It's just been a joy to welcome the Syrians and Iraqis in our community to uh, eat their food, to dance with them and to learn about their experiences and their culture. It started off as just a little group of us and then went absolutely ballistic like wildfire in the bush. We ended up seeing more of each other than our families um, <laughs> because Welcome to Welcome became this juggernaut with a life of its own and we had, we had no idea where it was going, we had no idea that we would be involved in so many different aspects of it, that uh, we would be collecting donations, we were inundated with no, uh, donations. And so then we realised there was all this legal stuff around people moving the donations and, you know, um, product recalls and all this stuff that we were just like, whoa, this is blowing our minds. So welcome to Eltham, they came to us uh, at a time where they'd had a lot of growth. Uh, it meant that they were getting questions around incorporation, uh, fundraising laws, managing their volunteers. Um, questions that aren't really relevant when you're a smaller group, but once you get bigger, um, they become really, really relevant. We met with a local shire who were very supportive and they told us that we had to incorporate. And we didn't know what that meant and we had to do a whole lot of research around that. We suddenly realised there was things like liability insurance which we didn't really know about, but we realised that we needed to. Uh, we're able to skill them up on, on the questions that they came to us with, but also give them confidence to know where to go if they have more questions. And so we found ourselves, it was quite frustrating because we found ourselves caught up in all this um, bureaucratic procedure, when in fact what we really wanted to do was just, you know, welcome our neighbours with a little barbecue or, and just get to meet them and get to know them and support them. So that's where Justice Connect came in. They really helped us sort out through that you know, legal quagmire that we knew nothing about and, and freed us up to be able to do the other things that, that we really wanted to do. There are thousands of groups who are facing these issues when they're getting started and we get contacted by many of them who are lost in trying to navigate the different laws and regulations that apply when a group's starting out and our information's there to cut through all of that detail and to help them navigate that minefield. Now we're still working on a whole lot of that stuff. Some of it's already sorted out um, and some of it's still a work in progress but at least we have a sense now of what we need to do and it's given us the confidence to go out and you know and keep um, getting offers of those donations but also other things like grow the size of our group so now we have 8,500 followers on our Facebook page and a mailing list of a similar size and just a whole community who are behind us so yeah. <laughs>